The knee cut is one of the most powerful passes in jiu-jitsu, but one of the biggest mistakes I see people make when they try it is they're going for it at the wrong time. Setting up a good knee cut is about choosing the right moment to go for it. So I just got back from Ukraine, so I wanna share a clip from one of the classes I taught there where I went in depth on this topic. I'm back in Sweden now, so now I'm gonna go back to the traditional format, but sometimes these seminar videos are really useful because a lot of small details that come up from uh, questions people ask, as well as the format of being in the gym just brings out different details. So I hope you guys like the content. And as always, if you guys like the video, like, share, subscribe to help support the channel. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you guys two or three of my favorite ways to set up a knee cut. The main thing is understanding the context or the situation you can do it from first, okay? So the first one we're gonna do is pretty simple. One principle to always keep in mind for guard passing in general is to finish any guard pass, we need our opponent's shoulder blades on the mat. Okay. So uh, whether it's a Toriando pass or whatever, I want to get his shoulder blades on the mat. So if I Toriando, you see I stay over him, this keeps him flat. A lot of people when they pass, they're out here and you see how he can fight, mm -hmm. his leg can come, he can do stuff. The same is true for the knee cut. A lot of people, however they get to the knee cut, they come in here and they're like trying to go here, but you see I'm getting pushed away. I always want to go into my opponent's upper body with mine, so I'm flattening him. You see how his shoulder blades are becoming flat here? See, now as I go through, I'm heavy. And if he was to try to rotate to his left that way, I, I go back this way. You see, I'm always trying to keep my opponent's shoulder blades on the mat. Any guard pass will always finish with their shoulder blades on the mat. When you enter, they can be in different positions. So we have to make our choices depending on what they're doing but we need to end up that way, okay? So the first knee cut we're gonna do is like the traditional knee cut with like the lapel and the leg, like that. But I'm gonna explain how to actually set it up. Okay, so just be here like this. Perfect, okay. So the biggest mistake people make when they try this classic knee cut is they don't care about their opponent's leg positioning, right? And so what they do is they come in here and then they, they knee shield. Has anyone had this happen to them before? This should be everyone. Yeah, everyone. Except him, he said no. But. <laughs> 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 this is never, you've never been knee shielded? You've never been knee shielded? Okay, yeah, yeah. No, okay, fair enough. Okay, so this is, uh, this is pretty common. Another common one is the guy will lasso his leg over top. Yeah, even if he doesn't have the sleeve, he'll just lasso this here, and it's very difficult to get through. Okay, so when his legs are closer together like this, or not even that, like here, when you come in, that's almost always going to happen. So I'm usually going to tore you onto them. What I like to knee cut is I come in and I see the guy's legs are a little wider. When the guy's legs are wider, it's harder to Toriando because I have a lot more distance to clear. Does that make sense? So when I see this kind of wide leg positioning, that's where I like to go for a knee cut. Okay? So again, you can't pick what you want to do. You can't just go, I want to do a knee cut, so I'm going to do a knee cut. Instead, it's like if you're in closed guard. You don't just go, I want to do an arm bar. You have to take what he gives you. If he gives you a collar choke, you take a collar choke. If he gives you a triangle, you take a triangle. It's the same. When the guard is open and he's on his back, I have to take what he gives. If his feet are really high, keep your feet really high, then I'm gonna stack, right? But in this case, his legs are kind of wide, like this, he's in this kind of a positioning. And look, I'm just gonna push this down. I'm gonna aim for like the lapel or the shoulder, and I want my body weight to kind of impact on his uh, knee or thigh here. I want to create this kind of like wishbone effect, like prying the hips open. You see? So keep this kind of up, uh, up yeah, like here. See, look, I hit here. See, once I hit here, see now, Nishal? You see how you can't, right? I've already opened the legs. Same thing for the lasso. If he's out here like this, keep the legs wide, right? So he's here like this. When I go in here, he can't lasso either because I'm already coming up here. Once I'm above this leg, he can no longer lasso because my body is in the way. To lasso, his leg has to come in front of me, right? Mm -hmm. So, exactly, right? So if I'm here, my body's in the way, he can't come through that anymore, right? So again, we're here, we're moving around, you know, I probably stack here, right, we're like this, boom. I come in, see I push this down, once I go through, he's usually gonna frame with that arm on my chest, right? I'm gonna grab the arm, and I slide through. My right arm, I don't focus on a particular grip. I just try to block so I can flatten him, you see? If I, if I get too focused on this, he might re-pummel his grip or whatever. But when I just go here, see, take an underhook. See? Like 
that. So one more time, we're here. I can Toriando there. His legs are a little bit wider, right? There, grab the arm and finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's try that. One, two, three. So, so you, yeah, go ahead. You, 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 don't, you, you don't have a specific point to grab the material. You just, no, you just yeah. like, like scoop. Sometimes, scoop. correct. Yeah. Sometimes I will grab the material uh -huh. if it just feels natural, especially if I start sitting up. That's kind of mm -hmm. different, right? I'll do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, often you trying to get one thing in specific, mm -hmm. uh, because the position can change so much, you get too focused on it. My main thing is I want to be like here. If I'm here, this body weight is going to drop him down, mm -hmm. right? And when I'm like this, he cannot redig an underhook either. You see, my elbow kind of functions like a nail here, drops it, right? If I was here, I could have, I would take this if I could, mm -hmm. but it's not a big deal. I'm more just focused on my body hitting in here and slide through. You don't use the underhook in this situation? <laughs> no. The reason I don't, the underhook, like the classic underhook, it's really nice, mm -hmm. but it's hard to get if the guy has no grips, right? So if I'm here and like you were in this kind of like positioning like this, I'm more worried about you pushing with that. So if I try to swipe an underhook on that, you're gonna frame me and it's gonna be, you see, I don't have anything to hook. Mm -hmm. The underhook is more natural if you have like my pant here, like in De La Diva, hold the pants. Yeah, here there's actually an underhook to grab because you holding my pants, turn this way, mm -hmm. you holding my pants attaches that underhook. Does that make sense? You see how there's now there's an underhook? And then I go through, right? Same thing, if you had like a single leg grip, like set up like on a single leg, yeah. See, I can get that there and start doing it. But when I'm here, trying to go for an underhook doesn't, there's nothing to grab, so I frame instead. Does that make sense? It's, it's all about understanding the situation to make the right choice. Cool. Just explain no, all no, of that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Ой, <laughs> <laughs> Да, так надо бороться. Нет, все понятно все, ребятки, или нет? Кому не понятно? Guys, guys, just go ahead and start. I'll walk around and correct you. Just try your best. It's good. Cool. All right, guys, let's go. One, two, three.